Perfect. I hope you guys are, are you guys are uh, all well, staying home, staying safe. I know it's difficult times all over the world. It's pretty crazy the reality we live in right now. Um, as you guys may know, it's World uh, World Health Day. So uh, once again, it's a fantastic uh, opportunity for us uh, uh, human beings to say thank you to to the frontline uh, health uh, care workers, uh, you know, the first responder and the professional of health are, are doing an amazing job and they're working hours, uh, unbelievably uh, difficult for them, for their families. So uh, uh, hats off to them. They're fantastic. And uh, thank you once again. Yeah, I think, you know, we just want to say that, that in this struggling time, it's allowed everyone to kind of reflect and, and be appreciative of, of, the services and people and things that we, we oftentimes take for granted. Um, most importantly, I think it's a time for us to, even though we're stuck inside or, or we're inside, reach out to people that, uh, that you would normally connect with on a daily basis. Uh, I just start things off with a, a question for Max. Um, obviously, Quebec's been the, the worst hit area in Canada just now. Just wondering what word you've had from back in your home province and how how easy or difficult has it been to kind of keep in touch with all your family members? Yeah, I know Quebec, uh, they just released a statement today. They're about uh, 9,500 or so uh, in the province. And so uh, my brother lives on the island of Montreal, my parents on the South Shore, so uh, I talk to them pretty much every day. Uh, I talk to my grandmother as well. That she's uh, she's in her apartment. She's not leaving uh, there. Uh, my my father and mother are taking care of her. Uh, but yeah, it's been it's been a reality that everyone has to adapt really quick because uh, in the past two three weeks it just kind of exploded here in the country uh, and and. And we're seeing how this 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 virus is uh, expanding really quick. Uh, but I'm I'm really grateful that the family is LT. Uh, you know, even my my in-laws, everyone is LT and taking care of them. So uh, that's good. But yeah, I've been I've been in touch with them uh, every every single day. Okay, I guess it's uh, it's my turn uh, next. Uh, my question uh, was uh, for for Russell. Um, Russell, uh, just a, a question um, for you. Just um, as a professional athletes, you guys have um, you know, more um, exposure in the uh, in the city and role models to the, the fans, especially younger people. Just in this whole theme of being together apart, as we all self isolate and do our uh, bit to to um, prevent the spread of COVID nineteen. What can you guys do to help sort of spread the message, especially to maybe younger fans or, or fans in general that are maybe feeling a bit of the the, the, the stress of the situation? What, what sort of do you think that you guys can spread? Um, I actually really like the way you frame that um, being together apart, and I think that that's very important. And I understand what you're saying that um, being a, a professional athlete, you you um, have to understand that your actions have consequences and, and they, they have implications on, on especially the younger generation, but not just the younger generation for people in, in general. Um, so I think the most important thing for us to do is to listen to the health authorities and, and take their advice because they do know best. Um, in this day and age where social media is the easiest tool to connect with people, it's important to whether it's just a picture talking with your, your friends, uh, connecting through a social media platform or a Zoom call like we're doing right now, um, it's important to take the advice, apply it, and, and don't stray from it. Right. Um, I'm going to ask the next question as I, I was asked. It's, this is for either, well, both Max and Russell, if you want to answer it each. Um, with the coronavirus situation, particularly developing as it is mostly, especially in the United States, um, and being somewhat of a contrast of a situation here, have you guys had to have chats with amongst your teammates and maybe other MLS players and coaching staff and so forth? Are you, is there any amount of concern at this point um, that the that you may that the season 
potentially may be in jeopardy as a result of the pandemic situation, especially in the U.S. Have you guys had a chat about that at all lately? Um, Max, I'll answer first if you don't mind. Um, I, I think, you know, th this is this situation that we're in it is bigger than sport. It's bigger than being an athlete in general. I think first and foremost, we as as people, not not athletes, we need to take care of our health. And we need to make sure our family and friends and, and neighbors and people in our community are doing okay. And if you do your part and, and focus on your health right now, hopefully, and you listen to the advice from the health authorities, hopefully this situation will resolve faster, sooner rather than later. And then I think what follows that is sport, is, is um, everything else after that is, is secondary in this situation. The main thing is, is your health. Yeah, true. On, uh, on on the first degree, health is main the main point here. And as the sports side of the question, it's more of everyone. Every league is on the same page right now in the same situation. Uh, I've seen yesterday the MLB wants to do some some stuff regarding of health federals uh, federals agents that will follow teams and start preseason in, in May and stuff like that. But, you know, every league is in, has their own opinion, has their own way. Uh, I know the president of the United States said that the NFL wants to restart that schedule in September. And for us, it's it's way too early to speak about anything. Um, let's see how the situation develops in the U.S. because uh, it's growing really fast and then we'll see. But... I think the professional of health will, will uh, in the league will sort it out and us, we will follow. Uh, but totally health is, is way, way better and way more important right now than, than when the, the season will restart. Okay, I, I guess I'm next. Um, a question for Russell. As, you know, the longest tenured player on the Whitecaps, obviously you've been through and seen a lot on this team. And I know that both uh, Mark Panis and Axel Schuster and Mark DeSantos talked about how you guys are staying in contact, doing group workouts, all those sorts of things. But as, you know, a, a vocal leader on the team, what has your role been in keeping players in touch or trying to keep that group camaraderie during this time? Yeah, I think first and foremost, like you alluded to, um, the club has done an outstanding job supporting players and everyone in the organization as a whole. Uh, I had a conversation um, with Mark and, and I said, this was the most support that I've felt since I've been at this club. And this is an unprecedented time and the situation is ever evolving and <sighs> You know, one day you think you got a pulse on things and, and something else develops the following day. So it's ever adapting. And I think that's that's the, the thing that we have done uh, incredibly well thus far is is adapting to, to scenarios and situations as they come at us. Um, just to mention a few things, um, the Whitecaps organization has, has supported us in getting us all stationary bikes at our home to make sure that we're keeping fit. They've provided us all necessary uh, weights and equipment to keep us again fit and healthy they're providing meals being with a meal service being brought to our home so they're doing everything um, on the physical side to, to keep us fit and healthy and on, on the mental side of it we are in I think four or five maybe four different group chats where it's constant communication with each other um, you know guys like Andy Rose and just sending challenges in the group of and Max participating in them and sending, you know, your meals in the group chats and um, starting uh, starting five teams with, with, you know, things around your house. Just anything to keep guys engaged. And that's things that we're doing as a whole group. Um, but there are obviously individuals that you reach out with as well. And, I, you know, I can't count the amount of times I've been on the phone with Ali and Imbom. Um, and even aid in checking in to make sure guys are doing well. And I, and I think that's the most important thing is, is just trying to be uh, and, and live through this as normal as possible. Um, and, and, you know, in this situation, there's so many things that you can't control, but the one thing you can't control is your own thoughts and you can control how you view this situation. And for me, 
uh, it's just being as positive as you can. Yeah, I guess I'm next. Um, this is really a follow-up question from um, what Simon asked. The, the situation in the United States is, is particularly dire. And, you know, there's only three Canadian teams and we see the numbers look some of the best when it comes to flattening the curve. Now, if the league does come back this season, how confident or how confident do you actually feel about traveling to some of these places in the United States in security? At what point do you feel like, okay, this is time now we can go down there, we're actually safe. Is there any communication from the league in that regard? Is there any communication between the players? I'm really curious to hear both of you guys' thoughts on this. There's a lot of uh, opinions, a lot of projections, a uh, lot of thoughts, nothing confirmed. Uh, everyone has their own little um, scenario. Uh, if I can say, everyone has their own little scenario of what will happen. But as of now, it's a day-by-day -day thing. We've seen it in our country and our, our neighbors as well in the, in the States. So it's a day-by-day -day thing. Yeah, there's not, mu not much more I want to add there. Again, the situation is ever-evolving. It's ever-changing. There's no definite, firm answer right now. Um, we just got to listen to the uh, healthcare authorities. Hi, Max. I was wondering how long you think it will take uh, the team get to get back to full fitness and be ready to play matches when the season does begin again. Do you think you guys can get back into it right away or maybe a two or three week training camp? What's your thoughts on that? Well, first, everyone will be are, are fit, still fit. Everyone has their own program. Uh, we're training. Everyone is training six times a week. And uh, there, there's no... Uh, There's no cheating. There's no cutting, uh, cutting exercises or stuff like that. So uh, we've we've said it in teams meeting that we had. There's no. We're not in off season mode. It's still the season. Everyone is keeping engaged, as Russell said and mentioned, and uh, everyone will be fit as soon as we can actually go back to get on the on the field. Yes, maybe there's going to be a few few sessions. I don't know. Uh, we don't know right now if we're going to start. Uh, is it going to be one week, two weeks, and then the first game, and then we we go right away, or are they going to give a, a longer amount of days of preparation? Uh, we we've had two games already in the season, and then everything was cut off on Thursday, uh, the Thursday before the Colorado game at home. So uh, it's a good question, but everyone will be fit. Now it's a matter of of uh, getting getting the rhythm with, with your teammates of getting the ball rolling and, and start uh, having game situations and, and small-sided games and all that stuff. So just rhythm with the ball, uh, with team team sessions. All right. Um, this one is for uh, Russell. Obviously, as you pardon, kind of alluded to earlier, as one of the leaders in the team, there's been lots of constant communication. Obviously, a unique thing is that a lot of a couple of players re recently arrived to the team, maybe right as the season started, for example, you know, Leonard Owusu, Daniel Bikel, Renko Veselinovic. How has that kind of integration been for them from your perspective? And what have you kind of done to maybe, obviously when, when they're socially distant, saying it's hard to welcome these new guys to the team, to the city, but how's that process kind of gone? Yeah, I, I think um, before all of this, I, I think the transition for the guys you mentioned was relatively smooth. Um, and I think the Whitecaps as an organization has done a great job with players coming in, making them feel at home. Um, and I, I think we kind of seen that and there's proof of that in with Ranko and, and just singing happy birthday to him and, and, you know, a meal to his house. Uh, but this situation poses um, different scenarios for each individual and they're not all the same um, and each person views them differently as well. So we're in a time right now where, where the majority of interactions need to be over the phone and on a zoom platform or uh, a social media platform. And I think we as a whole, as a club have done a great job with making all members feel included. And that's not just through the players, that's through the entire staff of the organization as well. Um, everybody feels that 
the support uh, physically and mentally. And, and um, I think the mental side of it is the big challenge right now because we're away from each other. Uh, it's just to make sure that everybody, you know, feels at home in a sense. And like you said, for the guys that just moved here, um, it is a unique situation that nobody has 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 ever gone through before. But I think we're doing the best we can under the circumstances. Hey, guys, uh, this is for both of you, kind of transitioning to uh, some on-the-field stuff after we got the important stuff out of the way. Um, I kind of wanted to see if either one of you guys had, you know, strong takeaways and thoughts on, you know, the first two weeks of the season, um, you know, obviously the loss to Kansas City and then beating the Galaxy. Um, I wanted to see how you guys thought of how, you know, the season got started uh, before it got paused. Yeah, Russ, I'll, uh, I'll start on this one. Well, the, we uh, we had a disappointing result against uh, against KC. Uh, we didn't pull the result uh, that we wanted, obviously, because we want to open the season well. In the meantime, uh, we didn't show our, our real identity and our real work ethic and the real team we were on the first uh, game of the season. Uh, sometimes... It, it unfortunately it happens of uh, you can't pull the results sometimes when you have to. But in in the game in Los Angeles, uh, we that was the feel of our our team in preseason. A whole the whole games we were playing it was this White Caps, this organization that we want to be about. And in LA, we applied it and we pulled it off. And then we were so we were so positive about going to Colorado home and and. Uh, finally uh getting getting a, a good game at home and to open up and to get all the crowds in the stadium uh, for the third game of the season we were really looking forward to this one uh but uh, you were really optimistic that as soon as we get back all together uh it's going to be the same mission the same vision for for all of us and to work on that uh that objective that will be three points and getting our identity and and uh, not getting carried away from from our our mentality. Yeah, I think to add to, to Max's point is is that I think we had an outstanding preseason this year, and and that has propelled us uh, to that victory down in LA. Whereas it's a very tough place to get points to even draw, um, and I think we're all happy with that result, and we we're just looking forward to get back on the field at home and, and show our fans exactly what what we're about and who we are. Um, because this is a new Vancouver Whitecaps, and believe me, guys, like um, we just all can't wait to get back on the field. And I think the situation just puts into perspective how much we all love the game. Like, we, I, I just I can speak on behalf of the guys is that you know we just want to be back on the field with the ball, and you know just as much as you guys want to see us back on the field, believe me, we want we want to be there for. Uh, just to lift the mood a little bit, just a fun question for both the guys. Maybe Max can start this one off. If you were to be quarantined with another member of the squad, who, who would you choose to be quarantined with and why? And which player would you definitely not want to be quarantined with? Oh, uh, I would um, I would say, I, well, you can quarantine with some people and there's others you want to kill after three or four days. And you know why exactly, you know. So I know I can live with Russ because he's my roommates uh, on the road and stuff. Yeah, we can live here, no problem. Uh, we, I can live with Kava uh, by personal experience. Uh, I can, I can do it with Jake as well, uh, Nowinski, and D Rose. Uh, cannot Yasser. I've been wanting a road trip with him. Didn't happen. Didn't put it off. And. I would say Yordi maybe because he's too much on on PlayStation and phone and stuff. And uh, sometimes I like to have a good conversation and just uh, checked out of of, uh, of internet and stuff like that. Russell, oh, oh um, who I would and who I wouldn't want to live with in quarantine? Um, Ali Adnan, both. <clears throat> True. <laughs> I also have a fun question. I was going to ask that. Thanks, Michael. 
Uh, Max, I'm wondering uh, who on your team maybe is the best cook and would be cooking up like fantastic dishes during this quarantine and who would be the most competitive in a board game situation, maybe a game night? Uh, game night, everyone is really uh, is looking forward to it because it's, it's our only way to compete right now. Um, so board games, everyone will be right away uh, in and wanting to win probably, but uh cook it's a good question i'm sure there's few cooks on the teams um that can i can actually put a nice dinner uh i know we all we all can't cook now it's the quality of the meals i don't know uh, the the season on the side and stuff like that so it's a good question but i'm pretty sure everyone can cook a nice meal all right this one's uh for you max obviously as you kind of mentioned earlier you guys are keeping in shape got the bike obviously but for someone say such as you as a goalkeeper, it's a lot more unique position in the sport. Really, you, you got to use your reflexes, maybe taking from a different skill set than some of your other counterparts. What are some things you can do to kind of stay sharp and stay on top of your game that maybe someone else such as Russell is in the midfield or someone at striker might be doing differently? Yeah, goalkeeper is a different, uh, different breed. It's, it's way different in terms of training. Uh, well, I have, I have two two times a week. There's plyo days where I have to I have to work on my explosivity and, uh, and 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 jumps, and then I have two days a week as well that I have to get my feet work in. So a lot of footwork because uh, you you guys know how that it's so important to move your feet across really quick. Uh, and and there's another exercise that I have to keep up with. It's just hand eye coordination sometimes of tracking tracking a, a, a ball just by juggling it or whatever. There's a few exercises as well that I can use on the internet uh, called a nor nor tracker. And there's a lot of exercises that are similar um, that you can use and work with. And then obviously there's the, the muscular part of, of the lifts to, to not lose the, the muscle compartment of, of your legs and, and body that uh, when you're back on the field, well, you don't feel like uh, you lose, uh, you lost uh, any kind of day uh, when you were home. Guys, I got a sort of a daily training kind of question. I, I, I'm assuming because you, as Russell had mentioned, you guys have got sort of um, bikes and stuff. And it, so it sounds to me like when you're doing your workouts each day, you're staying within the confines of where you're living right now. Are you under particular guidelines to avoid doing things like road runs? Like myself, who's really left with the only work that I can do right now is go for a jog. Are you given, have you been given license to have that as a training option? Or have you been told by uh, all the training and medical staff at the club that, uh, that really you need to keep your, your workouts within a confined environment? I think it's, um, I think like all the gym type stuff, it's better to do it inside your house because that's, it's, it's not really mobile stuff. Um, but as for runs and things like that, yes, I think we have the okay as long as we're not in, in a group and it's individual as for exercise. Um, that's the advice from our team doc. Uh, Dr. Bovard is, is, yeah, you know, you make, you want to stay inside, make sure you stay as, inside as much as you can, unless it's for necessity, like grocery or exercise. Um, so it is important to stay active, like Max said. Um, but yeah, uh, Max, I don't know if you want to add to that. I, well, yeah, we we can go for runs, uh, for and you know, upon personal experience, I have a dog, so I'm walking the dog. He has to go to the bathroom, do his stuff. So as as long as you get your social distancing uh, right and you respect the what the health um, health professionals are, are saying to you, uh, you're fine. But yeah, some players can go for a, for a run. And as Russell mentioned, it just needs to, to, to practice your social distancing. Don't get close to, to anyone. That's, that's the reality we live in right now. And we have to be careful about it. And we have to, to respect uh, the fact that we are in, in a, in a crisis. If you, if, I may use the term of uh, of living apart right now. Now, you guys are obviously used to eating healthy uh, as professional footballers. 
I don't know how you found being stuck at home. I found myself snacking a lot more, eating a lot more chocolate and crisps. How difficult is it for you to, to keep healthy? And do you have any tips for people as to what would be a good healthy lunch that, that people can just rustle up? <laughs> um, yeah, just add some variety. Um, there are always healthy alternatives and I'm lucky. I don't really have a, a sweet tooth. So I, I mean, I've, I know Max has a little bit of a sweet tooth, that's for sure. But you just switch it up and, and you know, we're, we're fortunate enough, you know, to have a club that's willing to provide meals for us um, four times a week. And other than that, uh, there are always healthy alternatives. There, we live in a day and age where everything's online and there's so many tips and people you can follow and blogs and things of that nature. Um so I can't say that there's one thing, but for me being inside, it's been really different in a sense that, you know, I wake up, I take care of my plants, you know, you got to water, water your plants and, and, you know, have an espresso and it got a little routine, you know, sit outside like on my balcony and just enjoy the sun when I can. But I recently moved into this apartment. So I've been spending a lot of time on Amazon and Wayfair, just, buying things I don't really need and having them shipped, you know, to the house and just really trying to adapt to this, to this new kind of lifestyle. I've been listening to records on my record player and, and, you know, just trying to make, make the, make light of the situation and just be positive. So you, you, I get what you're saying by the question. There's, there are ways that you can slip up and there are ways that you maybe take the easy solution of eating kind of unhealthy and then uh, not take care in a certain aspect or not feel motivated in a certain aspect, but there are always ways to make the best out of situation and keep positive. And, and I think that's what we're here to do. We have to support each other. So especially if you feel like a teammate or a friend or a family member is down that day or, or not, uh, not making the right decision, make sure you keep everybody in check and just reach out and say, Hey, how you doing? How can I help? Max about uh, any thoughts on eating healthy? Yeah. Buy fruits and veggies. <laughs> don't buy crap. Don't buy crap stuff. And then you'll be fine. Cause in your fridge, you'll have, uh, you'll have good, uh, good food and not uh, comfort food. That's it. So I guess this is the final question. A lot of people have been passing the time by watching Netflix. I'm wondering if either of you have seen Tiger King and what's your thoughts? Have you watched any stuff on Netflix? I don't have Netflix. Have you watched yeah. anything on Amazon or Crave maybe that you've enjoyed, Russell? I don't have Crave or Amazon. Is, uh, Russ is still on uh, the VHS stuff. <laughs> 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 but uh yeah i've been I, I watched tiger king i have one more episode of it and it's pretty wild uh any thoughts on it no i think it's just entertaining uh, it's just entertaining and uh twist but entertaining and then uh i watched uh ozark season three with uh, the, the bride's uh family bard marty marty bard bard in his name whatever <laughs> So yeah, it's a good little uh, series to watch, and then uh, I don't know Casa de Papel right now. I'm uh, episode two of season four, and uh, that's the shows I'm watching right now. A lot of movie. Uh, my wife uh, got Disney Plus, so there's a lot of movies right now. I don't actually. I've been watching the TV. It's just on my on my TV. BBC Life shows you oh. like. Oh, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I, this I can watch this. All day. I've been learning about, you know, like the lions, the pride. Oh, man, it's incredible. It was amazing. BBC every life every awesome. time we're on the road and I come back to the room, <laughs> BBC Life is, is on the TV every time. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Well, one, one more follow-up for Russell about his um, streaming or viewing habits. Do you not watch TV outside of the, the BBC Life or, or what do you do when it comes to that? <laughs> you might be the only person that... Uh, Shoot, yeah. Um, I uh, I might be a little bit of an old soul. Um, I, I've been reading a little bit and listening to some records, and you know, I, I wish I how much 
you guys give you a little insight. So I got my old uh, stereo here that I listen to, you know, a few books, a record player, the record. So, yeah, I've been watering plants. <laughs> not, not much though. Outstanding. I think on that, we'll end it. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Appreciate it. Everyone stay safe and healthy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.